Hello friends, do you like to skateboard too? Welcome back to All Mine Ranch. Holy cow, that's bright. My name's Ryan. And you know how they say water is life? Well, that's true. If water is life, solar power out here in the desert is comfort. And I want lots of comfort. Did I say that right? I want lots of comfort. Want lots of comfort. So that's what this is all about, cement holes, posts, setting posts into cement. Therefore, I can create a solar array. Therefore, I can create power. Therefore, I can create comfort. It's hard work. It's expensive. It's slow. It pisses me off, <laughs> but it's got to be done. So let's see what I can do in this video to build a big ass solar array, huh? I'm told uh, by Twitter that YouTube is incorporating a new AI feature that when I say like and subscribe, it's gonna do a little cool thing and reward you if you hit the like button and do something visually interesting. So let's test that out. It's been a while since I've filmed a week. I'm a week behind, but hey, one hole, two holes, three holes, four holes, and they may not look like much, but this one was solid rock. I can tell you, me and the jackhammer had a good old time making that bad boy. These are wet. Notice the water. The water helps break it up, helps me, I don't know, just get dirt out. So I'm waiting for that water to soak in. But I got some concrete bags that I've been saving up for about a month. I'm ready to use them. My goal here, and I'm not going to film most of this because it's kind of boring. But my goal here, as you can probably tell if I step over here, is to set some posts. I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and build this solar array and that's what this video is all about framing in the corners or setting the corners for a solar array but I'm gonna do it as two sections I'm gonna be able to do eight panels here and basically build a small solar array here separated by a gap where it goes between the two buildings right here and then I'm gonna do with these other two holes I'm gonna do another solar array that holds eight panels and I'm gonna extend it out just a little further wider than I need to. So it ties into the side of this building and comes out off of that. So I don't have to panel in the west side for, a, you know, to keep the wind out. Since I already got a wall there, I might as well take advantage of the wall and use that. All right, guys, well, as I'm working, I realized I've made some mistakes that I need to correct before I go any further. And I've also got a little bit of a mystery on my hands. So, Originally, I was going to work on, apologies for the wind noise, I was going to work on this outside corner here, but I triple checked my measurements and I realized I measured my solar panels wrong. And so this is going to have to come out a few inches, which means this hole is too far that way. It's going to have to go this way towards the east a little bit. So I said, you know what, let's pause. My outside corners are critical and the best reference point that I have is this section of the solar panel coming off this building since this building is straight. So this is going to be the first hole that I'm putting cement in with a corner post and where this corner post goes or is lives is going to determine the alignment for my other uh, foundation supporting posts. But here's something trippy. I don't know if you can see this. See this copper grounding wire? I just attached that, which is why I'm out of breath. It was, I was really wrenching it down. But the copper bar, you can just see the, the tip of it, whoops, sorry, the tip of it sticking out right here. I didn't put that in there, but I didn't do this one. So it's just a coincidence that I happened to dig a hole at a spot and exposed a buried copper grounding rod that had no grounding wires going to it. So that's great, I can use it. I came and cut off some of this copper wire, attached it to it. I had an extra clamp, but I can tell by the fact that the tip of it is not flattened that no one sledgehammered that in here. So what I think happened is the previous owners and Brian or Laura, if you're watching this, let me know in the comments. I think the previous owners laid in a copper grounding bar rod 
and just covered it up. They didn't even have to pound it in. They just probably laid it in there. Now, I don't know if it's a four footer or a six or eight footer or what, but I'll take any grounding I can get, which is a difficult thing to accomplish out here. So I got another one, that's great, but it was weird to just happen to expose an unpounded in copper rod in it, at the exact spot. You know, if I had been off by six inches, I would have never known it was there. So that's a weird mystery. It's, it's kind of a bit of a, it's a bit of a head scratcher. All right, well, I just took about 20 minutes to do this one. It's still pretty soupy. It's moving around a lot. But if you look at it from this side, it's pretty close to plum. If you look at it from, a little hard to see the buckets in the way. If you look at it from this angle, pretty much plumb to the building within a, within a few degrees. I'll come back in five or 10 minutes and give it a little fine tuning and let it set up. But since I'm hot, sweaty, dirty, nasty, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to set post number two right here in this hole. That one took five bags. I thought it would take three or four, but it was the biggest hole. This one should be closer to three. And if I run out today, that's fine. I can either go to Home Depot tonight or in the morning, get more concrete. Um, I'm not concerned about using too much at six bucks a bag. It's not too big of an investment and it's an absolutely critical component. So that was slower, messier, sloppier. I had to try to set the post, not in the center of the hole, but more towards the north edge of it, which makes getting in behind it when you only have about that much space to work with to get concrete down in there, makes it a little tougher, but it's good enough to make me happy. When it sets up, it should be fine. So I'm gonna start going on this hole number two. Hey guys, welcome back to All Mine Ranch. Saturday morning, bright and early. Cold, a little cold out here. Maybe, I don't know, 60 or so, not too bad. But there's a chill on everything. I got my coffee. The sun just hit the mountain. I see cows in the distance. You know, I was up last night watching. I know it sounds cliche, especially for a guy my age, almost 53, 52, almost 53. I mean, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon is simply the best album of probably all time. So absolute work of art. I mean, if you if you go ask any music aficionado, they'll tell you about Dark Side of the Moon is literally a work of art that every note is flawless and it's the best album. It's my favorite album. And I was watching reaction videos on YouTube last night. I love seeing young people. In this case, I watched two younger black dudes who have a hip hop background discovering Dark Side of the Moon for the first time. All right, boys and girls. Well, you might remember about four videos ago, three or four, I bought this big ass stack of T111 siding for 75% off. I'm still very freaking happy about that. And this is more than enough to do my entire solar array paneling so wind can't get up behind it and lift up my panels and all future solar arrays. But, it needs to be yellowish. Let me show you why. 
I guess I'm going with the color scheme for this entire property. And as you can see, it's going to be bright for a minute. Let it adjust. See that mustardy golden yellow color right there? Everything's going to be that. So, it would make sense to paint all of that yellow <laughs> while it's here on the ground and easily accessible. So, before I get started for the day, oh, let me back up. That's a lot of work. Not doing all that today. I mean, painting 20 something panels with even with a roller, a lot of work. Um, but I could do two, three a week, set them aside, do two, three more. And that way, when I get the solar array pretty much done and it is time to panel it in, I can just do it. I don't have to pause and paint, you know, for days on end. So that's a good inside, that's a good indoor task. Nice to do on a nice quiet Saturday morning. And speaking of windows, in the last video, I was talking about some uh, windows that were listed on Facebook Marketplace nearby that had the potential to be my house windows in here. Well, update on that. Unfortunately, they did not work out. The guy did have the windows and I would have bought them, but the size that he had that I wanted, he wasn't willing to sell. He had five or six, you know, like 48 by 48 windows that were used but in very good shape and they had advertised them. But when I went there to Naco, they pulled a little bit of a bait and switch and said, oh, you know, I'm keeping those for my personal use. I only have these slightly smaller ones. And they were still nice windows and a good price, but they were just a little too small for this future house because the views around me is amazing. And while I don't want it to be all glass like my tiny house is, which is ridiculously hard to insulate, I do want windows that are appropriately scaled and wider than they are taller so that they take in the panorama of like an entire mountain that's just, you know, eight miles to my west or east, both sides. I got mountains on three sides early. So that was a bust, but oh well, live and learn. Next. short. All right, I got two painted. This one. I got a real light going overhead here, which is not usually the case. Out. I got another one right here. Drying. So let's go outside, although my battery's gonna die here in a moment, and talk for a minute, let the camera adjust about my solar array situation and where I left off at the end of the last video. I didn't film most of the work that I did on the Sunday, but essentially I got that two by 10 mounted down here. By the way, I got these three posts, supporting posts of different heights and styles, got those into cement and that's critical. And I spent a lot of time trying to get this perpendicular because the way the paneling needs to join in with this side of my solar closet, future solar closet, that one has to be aligned and it needs to be as close as possible to parallel to that, but not everything, including that back wall and the shed and this, you know, container, it's not all adjacent 90 degrees to it. You know, it's off by a few degrees for each one because I'm the builder <laughs> and I build to within, uh, you know, government tolerances. Anyway, so I've got to keep going. I'm bringing down the two by 10 by 16s. I also need to paint them in general before I put them up. So that slows me down a little bit. But because my solar panels are going to be running horizontally, lengthwise horizontally, there's going to be two across before it hits another, you know, well, well, actually two more two by sixes, two by tens supporting it um, by 16 footers. <laughs> so I got to bring two more off of that. They've got to be all parallel. They've got to be lined up continuing. So I need all that when I start dropping in those supporting two by tens, I need them all to be parallel as possible so that the solar panels fit in nice. There can be some gaps and there will be a little bit of play in them but just perpendicular and square is a good thing, but everything that I'm attaching it to, including the ground, is not perpendicular or square, but it's all gotta come together within fairly, you know, minimal tolerances, an eighth of an inch here, a quarter of an inch there. So yeah, that's the situation. 
So now that I have painted, adjust, adjust. So now that I've painted two of my future siding panels that's gonna be around that thing, um, I really need to start working on the next drop down. I've got it in the workshop. Let's just go out there and see what's going on, okay? Ta-da! I'm in my workshop. Mm. Two by tens need to be painted. They need a 30 degree angle put on the end because 30 degrees is the angle they come down. This one already has it, as you can probably tell. It's not a square cut, that's an angled 30 degree cut. I need to do it on the other one and then I need to grab red paint and paint the shit out of it before I can begin to mount it. So that's definitely next step. So I'm just kind of thinking out loud as I go along trying to figure out what's the highest and best use of my time and inclinations and mood today. The painting was fast and furious, but it actually got me sweating and moving pretty good. <sighs> Did some stretching in there to move my chair bound body all week. I'm chair bound working my ass off on Zoom calls and just but administrative shite, um, which I like, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it was a challenging week and a lot of hours in the chair, a full, yeah. I earned it last week, let's put it that way. I earned it. So stretching, moving, trying to get my breathing going, trying to get warmed up to tackle that heavy outdoor work. But first I have to do basically a few minutes of carpentry and painting. It's not the most exciting thing in the world for me to film, but uh, I don't know. Let's see where we go from here. All right, different angle. I have a piece of cutoff that's actually already painted. I've got to paint this red. I've got to paint all these that are dropping down red, but I'm going to put a chamfer on this, like a rabbit. I don't know what the term is uh, in woodworking. I guess a rabbit, a groove of some sort, and it's going to rest on this one and come out at an angle that is per you know, perpendicular to my support that goes up so that the solar panels will come down and basically be butting into this and resting on a ledger board that will be on the inside here. Okay, but it'll be cockeyed like that. I don't know if you guys can see the angle here. This is gonna come out about like this. And the nice thing about that is the solar panels will end here and then because of the groove that I'm gonna put on here so it sits down nice and tight, between some paint and some caulk, you know, rainwater is not gonna be able to get under there and then come back up unless the winds are strong and, and it'll keep the wind out. And easy enough to caulk up, you know, quite a bit every couple of years. And then this is all gonna be paneled uh, siding down here so that this is an enclosed structure. Basically like a shed where the roof is a solar array. That's essentially what it's like building. So it doesn't have to be perfect but I don't want wind getting in there. So wind tight is actually more important to me than water tight. So I'm trying to build and accommodate for that. I hope that made sense. Now we got to paint. I got to maybe take this one down, this cross support now that I figured out my methodology. Uh, I think I need to take this down or paint it in place. Grab my next 12 footer that I just showed you is going to go across here at this funky angle. I've got to paint that and route out that groove. And then I have to cut some uh, 30 degree angles on what are essentially the rafters, which are, you know, solar panel support structure, essentially. And I got to do a little of both of cutting and painting and figuring things out. So I'm not sure what I'm going to film, but I'm just going to dive into it and take you along as best I can. Hope that sounds good to you. Thirty degree angle. Saw. Hearing protection. <laughs> Eye protection. 